Let's talk about United. Let's talk about fucking Manchester United, my fucking horrendous club. We lost 1-0 away from home against Newcastle the other day. And let's say about the result. It kind of is what it is. You're not going to win every single game. The most frustrating part about the performance, about the, sorry, about the match was the performance. I think you can have an off day. Newcastle are clearly a you know a club on the ascendancy. They've got new owners. They've bought very rare, very well. They've got a very good coach, a very highly I think a manager that's definitely underrated in Eddie Howe, right? And they're playing attractive football. The fans are behind them. You understand you can lose, especially going to you know St James Park, a very intimidating stadium. You know, great. They play well, play amazing. You're not going to win those games all the time. But the performance, the lack of effort from our players, the lack of running, the lack of tracking back from our wingers in Garnacha and Rashford and shit, the horrible defending from our fullbacks, the lack of concentration in the middle, our shaky goalkeeper and Onana, our non existent Captain Fantastico and Bruno Fernandes, our striker Martial that's like, you know, he's not the he's shut up with his former self in terms of the ball sticking to him. It was such a horrendous performance from top to bottom. There's not really much I can pick apart, but look at the stats. Look at the fucking stats. The stats really tell you everything you need to know about that performance. Newcastle had 22 shots and we had eight. They had four shots on target. So they had basically 26 shots on goal and we had nine. That is a complete domination. That's complete get that's completely getting battered. When they have 26 shots on on, on fucking goal. And we have nine shots. Can you imagine that? Possession stats I'm not really too bothered about because possession can be a bit misleading. But when they have 26 shots on goal and we have nine, that tells you the entire story of the fucking game. Possession 59, us 41. Passes even is a good illustration of the control that they had in the game. They had 522 completed passes and we had 366. Absolutely crazy. Pass accuracy, 83%, ours 75%. Absolutely horrendous. But again, the lineup was really, 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 really interesting because if anything, it was just the same old names letting us down. The 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 fucking Dallows, the Luke Shaws, Maguire not really to some extent because I think he played pretty well. Um, Kobe Maino, I felt really bad for him. Again, after that great first performance for United, senior team, and then playing against, you know, Newcastle being left stranded and left to do the job of 11 people in the game and then playing too further forward and having to cover so much space. He looked very ordinary. Scott McTominay was hiding the entire time as he always does. Bruno Fernandes hardly did anything in the game. Marcus Rashford was... Maybe one of the worst performances Rashford ever. It's been quite nice to see people online reacting finally to Marcus Rashford because I think most United fans, myself included, have been seeing this performances more often than not. He plays at this all the time. He, just because he maybe scores a goal here and there, people maybe ignore it. But Marcus Rashford's performance levels have been so terrible recently. It's maybe wonder if maybe he's just gone to shit or maybe something else is happening outside of football because there's a rumour flying around on Twitter now at the moment that allegedly he's addicted to Xanax. That's the running rumour now at the moment. Again, I don't believe it personally. I think it's a convenient rumour to kind of come out there. But allegedly there's some sort of Xanax addiction thing going on there. He failed a drug test or something, whatever. Allegedly, who knows? But regardless... He's playing like absolute dog shit. There was instances where he was, you know, attempting to track back and he just gave up and started walking, which is absolutely criminal. So his lack of effort, his lack of fucking, you know, putting his foot forward for the team is just what it is. I guess it's paramount to where we are as a club. And if anything, this loss was weird because it didn't really affect me like other other losses have. I think I've started to reach the point of just not caring anymore when it comes to United. Like when we lose games, I don't really flip my lid too much. I might use some expletives on social, especially when I'm ranting and shit on Twitter, but I'm not really that bothered to be honest because I know fundamentally the only reason why we're, at, you know, the reason why we're at where we're at the moment is largely down to our owners and we're quite powerless to kind of get our owners out of the club 
Our owners don't want to leave. Our owners want to bleed our club dry. So without new owners, we are basically fucked for a long, long fucking time. So it's not really much I can do. Not much my shouting or screaming can really affect or change things. So it kind of is what it is. But it is frustrating to see us play so horribly, so consistently for so long. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. The substitutions from Eric Ten Hag also need to be spoken about because he's really starting to show that he might not be the manager that we hope to be. He might be the greatest catfish of a manager ever seen. Eric Ten Hag may be the greatest managerial catfish we've seen. And I think my real antennas were up when I heard that story that allegedly Eric Ten Hag said something like, oh, he wasn't brought to United to play the Ajax way. He was brought there to win. So he essentially changed his philosophy of how he was, likes his teams to play football and kind of basically mold them to the players that he had, which I think is a wrong way to go about things. I think if you're a top manager, you have your way of playing and the players have to acquiesce to how you play or they get booted out. But obviously with the owners that we have at the club, they don't really care about our long-term future sporting-wise. So players get contracts that don't deserve them and we don't sell well. So he's having to hold these play He's having to you know keep a hold of players he probably doesn't want to keep a hold of. And then he's having to sign players off his own back because we don't really have a good structure in terms of footballing choices and self-directed football and whatnot. His choices haven't been the greatest. His black book isn't maybe the most extensive. And now we're in a position where he's not playing, as, he's not playing an attractive style of football. Our results sound shit. Our performances are shit. And now the players are starting to fall out with him. And I hate these headlines, personally. Eric Ten Hag has lost elements of the United dressing room as um, his style and treatment of Jaden Sancho is questioned. Because for me personally, I feel like these players have gotten away with fucking murder. And as much as I hate Eric Ten Hag and I think he's a fucking shit coach and I would sack him tomorrow if I could or today, I would much rather see half of that team sold, contracts terminated before Eric Ten Hag gets sacked. I would rather see those players leave before he gets that because those players have thrown every single manager under the bus post Sir Ferguson. And some of these players have no right to have that much power over the club considering that they've not won anything. They've not achieved anything in the game. And some of them are fucking shit anyway as players. Why the fuck are you having any say so on what managers we have and how long they fucking are? I fucking hate it. So this is courtesy of Sky Sports News. So I guess it's some sort of reliable source inside the dressing room leaking his information, which always seems to happen whenever we're losing, suddenly these players want to start talking. It says, Eric Ten Hag has lost elements of the dressing room at Manchester United with players questioning his playing style and treatment of Jadon Sancho. A group of players are becoming disenchanted um, uh, with the Dutchman after the slump to a 1-0 abject performance against Newcastle. One source has claimed that Ten Hag has lost 50% of the dressing room, which is his refusal to act on concerns voiced by United players, which makes sense to be fair. Like, I think even Ajax fans, before he joined our club, Ajax fans were telling us online that Eric Ten Hag is incredibly stubborn. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change his ways. So when he has his favourites, he keeps playing them. When he wants to play a particular way, he will keep playing it. And that's it. He's not going to change his ways. And we've seen it basically going forward. That's what that's been one of the most frustrating parts of Eric Ten Hag's tenure so far. His inability to change um, based on the evidence kind of presented to him. It continues. We should make it clear that it's very easy to kick a club when they're down. It's easy to kick Ericsson Hug when he's done. It's really easy to say he's lost the dressing room and that the players are not playing for him. Oh my God. Look at our next fixtures. These are some very tough fixtures. We're playing Chelsea away. No, playing Chelsea at home. Bournemouth at home. Bayern Munich at home in the Champions League. By that time, we probably might have been knocked out of Champions League. Liverpool at, um, away, which is going to be... That might be the way Ericsson Hug gets fired. I think most of our coaches... Um, a heavy loss to Liverpool usually has a very devastating effect on their tenure. So if we lose to our fucking bitter local rivals, then there is a chance that Ericsson Hall gets sacked by then. But again, I would much rather see half of that squad get fired or get sacked or get terminated and see him leave first. But that is going to be a brutal game. Then we've got West Ham on the 23rd of December at, away. And then we've also got new um, Aston Villa on Boxing Day at home. Jesus Christ. Anyway, it continues. My information is that some of the players are confused with what is happening. He has lost elements of the dressing room. One source tells me that he has lost 50% of the dressing room. Quite a few players are unhappy with the style of play. They also feel like the training is too hard. <laughs> I fucking hate our players. The training is too hard, they're saying. They're running too much during training. Oh my fucking God. These absolute 
prima donnas. Training is too hard and we're running too much. I was told the players don't know what they're what they're running for. <laughs> What cunts? I fucking hate them all. Honestly, if I could if I could line up all of our players on a fucking wall and pull out a blicky, I fucking would. Honestly. It continues. Also, some senior players have spoken to Eric Hag about where they feel the club is going wrong. They spoke to him about their other experiences of playing for big clubs. Who is that then? Only players that play for big clubs are Varane and fucking Casemiro. Really? Who else has got something to say? fucking cunts they've spoken to him about their experience to play for big clubs they feel like the manager should be a little bit more touchy-feely oh my god oh james Sancho thing continues they feel his man management could be a little bit better berrington hog is the boss and he's the one who calls the shots he is not for turning he is going to do things his way i've also been told that a few of the players believe that he is too set in his ways and he's too robotic <laughs> these players are fucking cunts i swear to god they really are man they don't even run they don't even like forget not being good enough like it's one thing not being good enough it is what it is right you can only play within your you know within your range of your abilities your god-given abilities or whatever abilities you work on but what we ask for as fans is effort 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 bro just run put an effort in put a tackle in show that you care about the fucking badge you care about the club or just put your all into the performance if you don't care about the club just clock in like you're at work and put your all into performance they don't even do that fucking hell i've also been told a few players believe that he's too to set in his ways and too robotic um ten hag has also lost support dressing room over his ongoing standoff with sancho so sancho at the moment is having an ongoing beef with fucking Eric ten hag he's kind of currently changing with i think with the youth team isn't it with the kids the funny thing is according to some people he's training with the youth team so he's been banished for the first team and allegedly it's it's basically illegal for him to change in a dressing room with the kids because i think they're under 18 so he has to change in a, in his car before he trains with the youth team imagine how embarrassing it is as a senior player because he can't be in a dressing room with him because it'd be it'll be some pedo shit so he has to change in the fucking car before he goes to play with the kids in the fucking training pitch later on absolutely horrendous treatment from him man um a few of the players um, are also unhappy with Jaden Sancho has been treated. He's got people in the dressing room who are close to him and he's been totally frozen out because he refuses to apologize to Eric Ten Hag. He's training with the kids and he's eating on his own. Quite a few of the players feel like it's gone too far. Of course it has, man. Um, but again, it's I don't really blame Eric Ten Hag. He's got his fucking, you know, issue. he's got his issue with, with fucking Jaden Sancho, whether they, I bleed them or not, whatever. I feel like if you're at a big club, a big club should have stepped in by now. They should have stepped in and said, hey, you either have to sort this issue out, come to a resolution, or he gets sold. You don't just leave him, you know, in the lurches, banished from the club, especially a player of, the, of his caliber, of his profile, just fucking, you know, not playing at all. Like, it's just not going to, especially considering how popular he's in the dressing room, it's not the way to forward. They should have sold him instantly or they should have acted as a middleman and come to and made them both sit together in a room and sort their issues out. That's what I think should have happened. He's training with the kids and eating on his own. Quite a few players feel like he's gone too far. They're always unhappy people in the dressing room. But when you're losing games, there are even more of them. So the players are saying they're running too much. I can't believe that quote, bro. That is honestly shambolic and shameless. Quite a few of the players are unhappy with the style of play. They also feel like they are training too hard and running too much during training. Fuck you all. Fuck you all. I fucking hate our players. I hate the club. And I can't wait for it all to be fucking burnt to the ground, to be fair. I'd much rather us get relegated and have these glazers be bled completely dry and then leave than us qualify for the fucking Champions League or anything. I don't care. The club is so rotten that it needs a complete reset it really does need a radical reset but the reset it needs is for it to get relegated these players all need to get fucking booed out because well. remember we get relegated they're all leaving when we get relegated if it ever happens and their wages get cut none of these players are going to stay for the badge all these players that profess to love the club they won't stay if they have to get their wages cut by 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent, they'll all leave because man, that is a good fucking payday for a lot of these guys. Sack the fucking club, get us relegated to the fucking championship and start again. Honestly, start again. And if tomorrow I hear news that the Glazers helicopter fucking crashed into the mountain, I will be clapping. I will be doing fucking backflips down the street. I'll be happy about that to happen, you know? Not wishing it, of course, but if it happened. 
I wouldn't give a fuck. I really wouldn't. I swear to God, I really wouldn't. Because those guys have absolutely destroyed my fucking club. And the sooner they leave, the better. The sooner they fucking leave, the better. I swear to God. The sooner they leave, the absolute better. So whatever. It kind of is what it is. It kind of is what it is. <laughs>